Hey there, welcome back to another episode of my detailed modeling class. Uh, in this one I want to talk about propellers. So propellers are more than just a bent piece of metal that spins around really fast. They're actually a very complex series of airfoils arranged along the blade and they're, just, they're angled and shaped uh, specifically to create a certain amount of lift everywhere along the blade. And you can see how the airfoil not only changes in shape but also in, in the angle because the angle of attack uh, based on how fast that blade is spinning, right, because the tip spins faster than the middle, makes a big difference in how much lift it generates. Now, ideally, you would be able to find uh, original drawings for the propeller you want to work on. I was able to find um, some original information for a prop from an HE-111. This is from a 1944 edition of the uh, Aeronautical Engineering Society of the Aeronautical Engineers Journal. Uh, talks about the blade and the various cross-sections of the blade. This blade was made by VDM, the Veronica Deutsche Metalwerk. Uh, which is the same company that makes the blade for the 109. So this blade is made by the same company. Um, the ME109's blade was a VDM 9-12159. It's the specific designation for the blade. And the closest I could find for a good profiled and um, airfoil sections was this drawing. So this is what I'm going to use for the basis of my prop. And you can see here, instead of doing it in front of you in real time, I kind of did an evolution of it. So just like we did with the wings, I created a series of of airfoil tracings. All right, so if you remember from the wing section, we did I did uh, each section of the wing had a little tracing. All these have the same number of vertices. Each section has the same number of verts. Um, and once those were traced, I then flipped them so that they were well, not really flipped, but aligned them so that they were horizontal, and then flipped them along the axis so that they were in line with a, as if you like took a saw through the through the uh, propeller blade and just took a cross section of it. So that's how that ends up, which ends up this next this next stage here, which is a series of these cross sections. And then just like with the wings. Uh, if you take an edge and you just loft it around, you can start to build, build up your prop, which is what this ends up being here. So just kind of from here to here to here to here, and this is the final product. The only extra stuff that I had to do is the end of the propeller ends in a circle in a cylinder. So transition from the airfoil shape to a cylinder, and at the top at the bottom, you're just going to have to add a few extra faces to make this this rounded tip here. So just some good quad geometry down there to round off the tip, and that is the blade. So it's not too bad if you actually have some cross sections, otherwise you kind of have to gas at it. Uh, may or may not work. The next step is installing the blade in the aircraft. So I've got my work in progress here. I've already put one blade in position. So if we look at it from the front, it's lined up vertically, uh, and we got three of them to do, but that's easy enough. And I've created a tool, a cutting tool, just like I did with the uh, panel. So if you've seen my other episodes where I've made uh, these individual panels and the episode where I cut pieces out, I just created a tool. And the next thing we need to do is create the section of the spinner here that's going to go in there. So I'm going to put my mouse or put the cursor in the middle of the blade here and or the middle of the spinner. I'm going to create a cylinder and uh, we'll just go with a, a reasonable number, say 16. This can be adjusted later. Spin it sideways and we want to align it front and back with the other parts of the prop. So I'm going to Select that point there, cursor to selected, and I'm just going to scale this guy forward because I'm going to go to cursor mode, so SY0, and it's going to put it right in line with that bit. And then if we go to this one, and I pick one of the endpoints here, cursor to selected, and now I can SY0. And now at least the center piece is now lined up front to back with these pieces. It just needs to be scaled to fit a little better. So medium point. I'm going to scale that down so it's it's close. A little bigger is fine. And make this one do the same thing. Scale it up. It's a little bigger. And make the one in the middle a little bigger. That one's fine. And then a little bigger. So we've got something that's roughed in. Now I want to get rid of the faces. We don't want them. And now we want to add a shrink wrap modifier to this just to get it to shrink down to the, uh, the spinner that we created earlier on. So I want to... Yeah, it's called spinner shrink. All right. All right, you can see all that snuggles down. I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to apply it so that it's, those points are as close as they can be for now. And we'll have more detail to this later. Um, right now, though, I want to go into bottom view. And I'm going to hide my prop, select my piece here, control click on my cutting tool, and just make sure that the um, you don't have any modifiers turned on on your base piece there. Control click, F3, knife project, and you don't have to cut through because we don't care about the other side for this because it's not going to be a mirrorable shape because it's you know, three blades and not four. So that's going to be the hole we don't need. So let's just take a look at this. And the next thing to do is to clean up this geometry. And I don't need to do all the geometry. I just need to do half. So I'm going to get rid of that. And now I might speed up the uh, camera a bit while I do the next bit. All 
All right, so I've added, you know, cleaned up those edge loops, and I've added a couple edge loops in there because I want more resolution for going around the spinner. So I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to apply it. It's going to puff it back out. Now I want to add a mirror back onto it. All right, so we've got this cutout here, but we need to make this a cutout across 30 degrees. So let's apply that. And here I'm going to take, go to the front view, and I'm going to put my cursor right in the middle. I'm going to duplicate a vert. S0, I need to be in cursor mode, S0, and that's going to put the curse, that, that vertice right in the middle. I'm going to go E, Z, straight down, and now I'm going to go R, 60, right, because we want to make three equal sections here. Now if I do Shift D, R, 120, negative, all right, so now I have a 120 degree arc here, and I just created a cutting tool that I'm going to use on the this kind of base mesh here. So separate that with a P, now we can go into here, select all. Control click our cutting tool, hit F3, knife project, and you can see we've cut right along there. So if I go back into front view, and I just want to get rid of, I want to do it in face mode though. Get rid of all those bits, and now we have a third of our piece here. And as long as we're working with this bit, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping before I duplicate it. So I'm going to take and spread these out going from the center. All right, so now we've got nicely spaced out quads for a bit. And the last thing I want to do is I want to, as long as I'm here, nah, we'll, we'll do the next bit. Um, go into front view, still in 3D cursor mode, select everything. Shift D, R120, 120 degrees, Shift D, R120. Select everything and merge by distance. And you should see that we've merged 27 vertices there. So we've merged all three together. Now we've got our three bits. And I want to bring back our pieces, and it's possible at this point that we have moved our edges a bit. So going back to here, I'm just going to try to make sure I've got a nice, you can see how wiggly that is. So let's go back here, and we're still in 3D cursor, S, Y, 0, tighten that up. Do the same thing here, pick a leading vert cursor there, and do the same thing in the back. You can see how wiggly that is, S, Y, 0, tightens that up. And let's duplicate our shrink wrap again, tighten it up one more time. All right, starting to look good. Now we just need to add some thickness to this. So we're going to go to our solidify modifier, even thickness, probably like three millimeters and only RAM. We don't need more than that. And notice that uh, it's not behaving properly and that's because the scale has been set. So watch what happens when I hit control A and apply rotation and scale. See how all of a sudden it gets thicker again. All right, and that's because the scale wasn't one. So maybe four, like a little thicker, yeah, maybe five. Kind of a guess, and we only need the rim. We don't need to do the inside faces. All right, so let's apply that. And now we're going to do our old trick of taking all the edges and setting a bevel weight to them and also putting a uh, UV seam on them just to make unwrapping things easier later. You know, putting the seams on them now saves a lot of time later in the project since we're already in here. So I want all those to have a weight of one. I want them to be marked as seams, and then I'll need one more seam there just to un unwrap the uh, cylinder shape. So mark that as a seam. So let's smooth that out. I'm going to add a bevel to it. Move it up top. One, two, wait. All right, that'll crisp up those edges. I need a subdivision surface on that. Maybe one, maybe two, not sure which. Should go down one there, like that. Let's take a look at it, matte cap. All right, I don't see any distortion there. That looks good, nice and clean. Let's take it back to our model, and hopefully, if everything worked out, we've got decent seams there. Now, one thing I'm not liking is the fact that somewhere along the line, I've lost the curvature of this nose piece. Um, but that's not a big deal right at this point, because uh, because we're using shrink wraps, we can actually fix that without too much work. So what I want to do is, like we did with the other shrinks, I want to set up a vertex group so we only shrink the outer side and not the not this rim. So control I. I'm going to create a vertex group, assign it, call it S for shrink, and I'm going to go to my shrink wrap modifier and just assign that so that when the shrink wrap modifier works, it only works on the skin. Alright, the next thing to do is to go back and address um, the the lack of conform you know, the, the shape, the fact that, that shrink doesn't actually conform to the image plane is bothering me. So we can see here we've got 
it doesn't doesn't fit anymore. So I'm going to move the cursor to that, and I'm just going to use a lattice and a couple of sections to it. Maybe yeah, that's good. And then we'll go here and we'll add a lattice. Choose the lattice, and then in the lattice, I'm going to scale up our spinner so that it fits that shape better. All right, so let's take a look here. So we change that spinner, so it means probably need to see how that changes the shape of that, but it's not a big deal. We just need to duplicate it and apply it. That looks good there. This one, again, it's going to push it back out. Now we're going to have to change the front and back probably because it did push it out quite a bit. You know, the, the, the mistake was further toward the front. So just double checking from the side, you can see what a difference that made in that piece. So let's duplicate that and apply it. And then of course we're going to have to do this one as well. Um, but again, because we're using the shrink wrap, it percolates right out for us. And we'll probably need to fix up the, the seams again. So let's go to this guy, choose one of the leading verts, select all these. I just want to make sure this is a straight edge, so I'm going to go there, SY0. Go to this guy. I know it's a little repetitive, but it does make nice tight seams, SY0. And here, I'm going to pick like maybe that one and scale that along there, and then we'll do the same thing here. And just take the front here, SY0. Alright, so turn on our bevel, turn on our subdivisions, and it's not looking too bad. So put our cursor back in the middle of propeller there, and I'm gonna go, let me make sure we call that prop blade, go to the front, and you know, probably not a bad time to make sure that this is unwrapped, since we're gonna be making multiple copies of it. So let's look at our seams. Could use a seam along the sharp edges here, it's probably the best place to put it, just like that. That'll unwrap nicely, so mark that as a seam. Turn this back on. And now I just want to duplicate this blade because I've got I'm on 3D cursor, so Shift D R120, Shift D R120, and there we go. We got our our blades for our 109. All right, and then just you know, like I've done before, I'm gonna take our materials, copy them over, so that I can kind of keep track of what what's finished and what's not finished. Um, and just for the materials, I don't think I've talked about this yet. I've created like a metallic material for it just for fun. Um, but it does highlight the bevels for us. So, just how this works. Um, you can see what the shader looks like. Kind of a metal, metallic looking. And then, um, just to kind of highlight the bevels, if you look at, this is just a temporary shader during development, just to make things a little easier to see. It's got some noise coming in through a color ramp that's used for roughness, and then it uses a little bit of ambient occlusion in an exponent to mix with uh, that metallic color to kind of highlight any of the crevices. And then I have a bevel node attached to the normal, uh, and that's going to help make the seams a little more noticeable. So for example, um, you know, if I click off this and we look at a seam and I take that bevel off, it just makes it a little, a little more prominent um, that we may end up putting in the final render depending on how subtle the seams are. It'd be a shame to put all those panel lines in and not be able to see them. So right, there we are so far. We got our props in, and you can see that the uh, fuselage paneling is coming along pretty well. I'm going to finish up the rest of the tail section uh, paneling, and then we'll start talking about the wings.